<laughs> Hi, I'm Patrick Callahan. So uh, let's begin. Ireland is the early 1700s. The country is plagued by famine, poverty, overpopulation. People are struggling to find solutions to this crisis. Well, in 1729, a pamphlet was produced with a lengthy title, A Modest Proposal for Preventing Children of Poor People from Being a Burden to Their Parents or Their Country and for Making Them Beneficial to the Public. So, what was this modest proposal? Well, you might recognize Johnson Swift. What to do about overpopulation and famine? Eat the babies. It's, it's a win-win. Think about it. I mean, there's too many people. And people are starving. <laughs> Put it together. Skip forward 280 degrees. There's no potato famine in California, but students are failing algebra in shocking numbers. <laughs> and despite, despite the state board's recommendations, infanticide and cannibalism no longer seem like viable options. <laughs> so, more students are taking algebra than ever before, and they're taking them younger. Look at 8th grade, ninth grade, more and more are taking it every year. Uh, think about it, 10th and 11th, still the same number, taking it over and over again. <laughs> but is this good? 1.8 one time, 1 times as many students did well in the high end in uh, 2008, 1.6 or 5 times in the low end, and 1.7 people are confused by what this data means. <laughs> I'll make it simple for you. More students taking algebra, more students failing algebra. About 3 in 4 students fail the algebra test in California. It seems like the more we teach algebra, the more we fail. The more we teach, the more we fail. Modest proposal. Why, why is it important to teach algebra? Why is it important to, to teach algebra? Um, why is it important to learn algebra? Well, there's a pamphlet. Why is it important to learn algebra? <laughs> The pamphlet says you must learn it to pass Algebra 1 to get a diploma and pass the test to graduate. That's not a reason, that's a threat. <laughs> but, alright, why teach Algebra earlier? Well, according to this, it's the toughest transition kids make, so we should push it down and focus on six and seven. You know what else is a tough transition? Getting a job, starting a family. Why don't we put that in there? <laughs> With your logic skills. But guess what? Abraham Lincoln and Albert Einstein said the same thing, but not about algebra, about geometry. So, <laughs> teach us <laughs> algebra. Teach more geometry. I mean, I trust Lincoln and uh, Einstein more than the policymakers. So, anyway, um, so let, let's step back a second and look at what traditional algebra is giving us. So the students are preparing to take algebra, they're taking algebra, and then they're failing to retake algebra. All these years of effort can be summed up in two steps. Take the numbers from the problem, apply a random operator. <laughs> let's, let's test it with some real items. Here's from the high school exit exam. It's a shoebox, and there's numbers on the lengths. Find the volume. Well, grab some numbers. Let's test. Step one, grab the numbers. Step two, do a random operation. Well, three numbers, you either add to or multiply. So that's a 50-50 chance of getting it right. Oh, 50 <laughs> Do you notice the brand of this shoebox? It's the actual diagram from the high school exit exam. Here's your pair of algebra brand shoes. I mean, if you didn't have test anxiety before you got this item, guess what, kids? Now you do. Uh, let's look at another item. This is also from the high school exit exam. Uh, cereal box, okay. Look, no numbers this time, and they want to make it hold twice as much cereal. Um, so do you double the height, double the length and width? It's a good geometry problem, right? Well, how do kids do on this one? 10% of students got this right. And look, did you notice? They gave the algebra, algebraic formula. They didn't give it with the shoebox problem. And if you actually try to visualize the correct answer, you get this, the worst cereal box ever. <laughs> that thing is going to tip over. <laughs> Finally, Nate, 1% of students got this Nate question correct. 1%. Instead of thinking geometrically and seeing this as a simple dilation, they did it algebraically and they messed up setting up the proportions. So, modest proposal. Teach less algebra, teach more geometry, and to make it interesting, I'll make a wager. I bet if students spend at least one day per week on geometry, 
the test scores will go up, even in algebra. Yeah. <laughs>